So what's the worst car ever? We give you our answer and we look at yours. We also answer your comments on our last episode talking about the Chevy Tahoe next on Talking Cars. Hi, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm John Linko. At the end of the last episode, we asked you out there in podcast world to tell us what are the worst cars ever. We got tons and tons of feedback. So we're going to look at, you know, the most popular picks among you. We're also, we're going to start, though, with our choices for the worst car ever. John, it's a worst car ever. It's a pretty broad category. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you have to do now. You have to set it. some rules. Right. No European models from Russia or the Eastern Bloc, <laughs> that's, that's at least. Right, you, know, right. in, you know, nothing. Yeah, I think you have to set some rules. The worst car for its era, because, I mean, it's no big deal to say that. You know, the, the Isetta that my parents had when I was born was probably a <clears throat> really lousy car. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be worse than most of the cars we yeah. list. Yeah. <laughs> So, John, your pick for worst car ever? Chevy Cavalier Car Cadillac Cimarron. Ooh, you know, a popular monk. Yeah, a popular one among our YouTube. It, it's just, it's worse for just so many reasons. Whether it's the product itself, which was just unimpressive and just kind of crappy and just cheap, and then also just from the corporate structure of just taking this cheap, basic car and then throwing on some some badges and making a Cadillac, which made made that model even worse. So, easy easy vote. Right I don't there. think they were horrible, horrible cars to drive. Yeah, I, I mean, I, gr I grew up in that era. My parents had a Pontiac 6000, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, this, the A car instead of the J car. Yeah, they were, yeah. I mean, we did get it. We got a terrific, uh, got a terrific post on this from Teddy Field. My vote for the worst car would be the Chevy Cavalier and all of its derivatives, mm -hmm. which would include the, the $16,000 Cimarron. It's not that they broke down all the time. Hell, you still see Sunfires running around trailer parks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But they were designed with total apathy towards the consumer. They were made from recycled Tic Tac boxes and shaped to look sporty. Sure, they sold well, but their very existence speaks volumes on corporate indifference and the stupidity of customers who subject themselves. Apathy, to I'd say contempt. There was, there was the car that had different badges on one side than the other, and that's what it was, is the apathy of the corporate structure from the top of the, of the building all the way down to, unfortunately, the lowly guy who was slapping badges on the car. Yeah, and, I mean, that, and that's what it was, and it was the apathy, indifference to the consumer, the contempt for the consumer, and it spoke volumes of the American automotive industry of that era. I mean, to the, my pick sort of goes in that direction. I had a pick that it had to be a car that was designed when I was alive. Mm -hmm or sold when I was alive, you know. So I went with the Chevy Vega. And, and quite a few of people on YouTube went with the Chevy mm -hmm. Vega and the, 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 the concurrent Ford Pinto. Yeah. You know, again, cars that were brought out with the idea of these are the small cars that are gonna beat back all the imports. Whenever they say that, it goes horribly right. wrong. There was nothing good about a Vega. You know, the, the aluminum cylinder liners, they tried to be innovative. They crapped out almost immediately. The car rusted almost immediately. Mm -hmm. It was just a lousy car. And I had an aunt who had one. She loved the thing. Don't until it got the Chevette. Until it got, a lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, a lot of folks on YouTube, every, every small GM car of the last 30 years, except for the Cruze, someone, someone mentioned. It mm. just, I, I think apathy was it. You had to create something Especially in the 80s and 90s, you had to create something that was cheap because you weren't going to make any money on it. And G GM is a good example of either they made too much and didn't care or they were spread too thin with resources and, and they had too many resources in one place and not enough in another. And they didn't give a damn about small little, little boxes. Let's be honest, they didn't care about them. Gabe, your choice, worst car. Yeah, I'd narrow myself to uh, my choices to just the cars that uh, were that I actually got to drive and got to test. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so my first pick is Dodge Nitro. Oh, Goodness. that car was, who oh. had nothing going for it. I mean, it was, the ride was stiff and snappy. The, it was bouncy. It had no, the, the cockpit was so narrow. You had to like leave your left foot at home before you went anywhere. <laughs> the car was I do that thirsty. All the time. Yeah. It was slow. It was noisy. It was one nasty piece of machinery. I mean, if you could call it that. I mean. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that for every road test we do, we give highs and lows. Wasn't that the one where we had highs? None. 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 
Yes. Yeah, I think there was a desire to put style in just because it had something. Yeah. As a, as in, yeah, none. No, there was the whole no, discussion. Yeah. We have to put something. Yeah. Like, no, no, no don't we don't. Have no, in. none. It had, yeah, because at least the liberty. Oh, you get two more? I'll give you two more. Okay. Quick. Give me a second. Yeah. Uh, at least the liberty version of it would go off road. Yeah, that would mm -hmm. go off road. This, this thing, know, thing, yeah. thing go off road. It needed, um, it needed a, a, a TNT plunger <laughs> underneath it. <laughs> That would have finished it off nice. It was, it was funny. When we visited uh, Chrysler a few years back, and we asked what's going to happen to the nitro, and they told the nitro is just going to vaporize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th there wasn't a ton of pride in that. Uh, okay, what are your other choices? Uh, there was a Kia Spectra in 98 or 99, and that was one little nasty car. It was Were stiff they? riding, noisy, thirsty with fuel, doors bounced back at you. The interior was was just a, a total insult. The you know, car was a piece of garbage. You know, a lot of people on in the YouTube comments mentioned Daewoo's. Was that worse than a Daewoo? Was that? No, it was in the same vein. Same, yeah. same bad. And equally forgettable. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Avoidable. Yeah. Very much so. Uh, your other I mean, choice. they might be worse if they were badged as Suzuki's those Daewoo's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, th there are some really regrettable uh, rebadged uh, Suzuki's. Um, your other choice? Uh, the Smart, the Smart car. I mean, it looks so cute, you, know, you see it parked on the street, but really it should remain parked on the street because you don't want to drive anywhere in that car. You know, we're going mean, to have we're have the angry guy who uh, said the smart is that's, fine. That's that's fine. Uh, bring them See our car is Gabe on. at Twitter, please. <laughs> yes, uh, no problem at all. Um, so that car is is nice to park. Leave it there as like a nice furniture on the road, but that's it. I mean, the transmission rocks you back and forth. The ride is crappy. The handling is clumsy. The stuff currently on sale, I pretty much agree. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, I mentioned the Isetta before. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a two-seater kind of a city car, like a post well, the door, post front war a kind door. of uh, <laughs> a thing. I mean, that, that's austerity. Right. And 40 years later, you get that smart, and you look at it, and you say, where is the 40-year progress? Oh, I'd much rather have a crash in a smart, smart car. <laughs> yeah, the safety <laughs> cage. <laughs> but if, if, remember, folks, if the best thing you can say about a car is it would be fine in a crash, that's not Compared enough. with an Asetta. Uh, that's, that's a that's total not. failure. I mean, all these cars have one common theme. You know, they are such failures because these are cars, you get in them, and you can't wait until you get out of that car and you say to yourself, I'm not touching this thing with a 10-foot pole. Uh, let's go down the list of what other people picked. By far, the most popular choice for worst car ever was the Yugo. <laughs> I have, I, I'm lucky enough to have never have you, have to drive one. Have you been in a Yugo? No. I have. Back in college, you know, the cool kid, you know, the, the one who only watched every third day, the one who went off and disappeared and went mountain climbing, you know, in the middle of, 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 of tests. He had a Yugo. And I'm like, this thing's a piece of crap. You know, and the girl, oh, oh, you know, my female friends are like, it's so cute. And I think mm. they thought Neo was cute rather than <laughs> the Yugo. So, I mean, the Yugo is like the Azetta. It is, it was cheap, cheap, cheap transportation. Yeah, e easy, not even bad engineering, just easy way of uh, capitalizing on whatever crisis was going on. I mean, yeah. it was a horrible car. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they fell apart almost immediately, but. Uh, no, you looked at it, it fell apart. Yeah, yeah, not great. I, think I remember seeing a car show. That was about it. <laughs> Uh, the, the second choice among uh, our viewers was the Pontiac Aztec. Not a pretty car. Not a pretty oh. car. You know, again, that's... Styled that, similar to a Honda Cross. But that smacks so much more of the corporate indifference and the apathy. Like, yeah, we know what it is. We'll throw some kids on stage in Detroit. We'll bring it out. Oh, it's kind of based a on a horrible. truck. It looks yeah. like this. It's hip. We know hip. You know, we'll, like we'll, Roger Smith and all his cronies <laughs> telling we'll, people we know what, we know what kids want. <laughs> we'll build a tent behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and this is what, uh, you know, maybe they were reaching, maybe but, I mean, they tried. They tried to market. do something different. Yeah. They tried to do something different. <sighs> well, you have the bar, the low bar they could always set. The funny thing is we tested it, this yellow Aztec, and this, we, we couldn't sell it. Yep. it. It wound up going to the facilities department at our headquarters where, where it, it still lives. <laughs> See, I mean, there's a the thing, can, you know, that, that was... 
My that God. car was How such many? an embarrassment. When I was assigned that car, I made sure that I arrived at home under the cover of darkness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 17 <laughs> years ago? Yeah, it was like I mean, so it still runs. Can you, well, is it that new? Yeah, 14 years. So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, 10, in a 10, 10. Still, it still says something that it's, yeah. it's still yeah. running. Uh, oh, other top picks among our readers. Uh, again, the Cimarron. Bottom picks. We don't want to confuse it with CR top picks. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Uh, the, the Cimarron, all the J cars, the, the Vega, Ford, Pinto. A couple of people mentioned the Lexus SC430, perhaps because I believe Top Gear said it was the worst car of all time. I could see that. Uh, I mean, not many modern cars uh, were so, had such a lousy suspension. Stiff riding, oh, it lots like of a roll, rock. roly poly in the corners, mm -hmm. um, body shake. Uh, the only thing it had going for it was a nice interior. Now, the engine was good. And the engine was yeah. strong engine, bathtub like sitting inside it. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was awful ugly. rear seats. It, it was ugly. ugly. But I mean, the best place for that car was Beverly Hills. Totally smooth. West Palm. Yeah, totally, yep. totally smooth roads, not going very fast. Yeah. Rear seat good enough for the poodle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's about all. Pomeranian. That's, <laughs> that's about all that was going to fit, fit there. there. Yeah. Any other cars in your uh, memory? That, two, we were talking about right in the beginning Hunday Excel. The first, first, first one, one, 1986. Yeah, I remember kind of getting up on two wheels with someone driving their Excel on the I-95 going to Baltimore. That's a bad idea. And it was just like a lane change. So that, and then I hated the PT Cruiser. I just, I just disliked the driving position. I just liked the noise. I just liked the ergonomics of that car. Not worst car ever, but I just, that one was one that sticks out in my mind, again, from that Nitro era of just, what are they doing? Other stuff come to mind for you? Well, there was this uh, K car based Dodge Daytona, maybe. It was a coupe kind of a car. Like the Camaro uh, competitor? No, it was a front wheel drive, uh, smaller than Camaro. Uh, was Shadow, it, was it? Shadow, Sundance, uh, was, 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 Turismo. No. Little larger TC than TC by Maserati. No, no, no. I do, I, I, I Anyway, I, I uh, I a friend of mine, a buddy of mine in college had that car. I mean, it was black, it was coupe, it was like cool looking. And, Shadow. Uh, I don't know. We were going on a ski trip, and for some reason, uh, which I can't for the life of me remember why, we decided to leave my... Uh, why didn't you take your GTI? Exactly. We left my GTI at the commuter parking lot. We took his car with the ski equipment. And on the way back, it was my turn to drive. And I couldn't believe that car it was so awkward, so clumsy, so... I mean, it was scary to drive. I mean, it was like any corner you, you entered, you were just holding on for dear life. Mm. I, I had an experience similar to that with a buddy's uh, S10 Extreme truck, you know, lowered to the ground. I mean, it was the 4.3 with the stick and so much body shake. Oh, yeah. just so much body shake. But uh, we could go on forever on this. But on the note of Chevys, uh, we had some reader comments about our Tahoe review. Uh, and people listening at home, count how many times the guy uses the word ass. Children, you might want to leave the room. From Kalani Hilai. Leave these things, excuse me, leave these things alone. Some of us still need true 4x4 full size SUVs. Step in height should be tall, dumb. Otherwise, you can't clear some off road hazards. If you want 7, 8, 9 passengers seating with low egress, buy an Acadia or the sort. Because of you in your reviews, I can no longer buy a tough Jeep Cherokee with a true 4x4 system. Dumb. All caps. I think other than that, he agreed with what we had to say about the You know, the it's Tahoe too bad we didn't car. bring the Tahoe right here to the studio and measure that front spoiler, that chin. I think it's about two inches off the ground. Yeah, yeah. The, hell, the hell with access yeah. height. I mean, the <laughs> thing's... It's for arrow, it's, you know, so yeah. it doesn't, you don't get lift. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to get 15 yeah. and a half instead of 15. Right, right, right. A gallon out of it. What do you say? Nobody's taking vehicles sev severely off-road, so it's not because of us. I love the idea that we are shifting the market by, by our strength and getting rid of true off-roading vehicles, but if we could shift the market that much, we would have clean controls. We wouldn't have Q, we wouldn't have My Ford Touch. We, we would have much, much better. You'd be able so, to see out of cars. You'd be able to you... see out of cars. I wouldn't drive a Mini that I can't see the traffic light at. I, I wouldn't have a, a giant hood that disappears and you can't see the bumper. I mean, we had another comment, you know, in, in pretty much yeah. the same vein that, you know, see you applies their general review to specialty vehicle and fails badly. I like their reviews on cars, not on these kind of vehicles, not so much. 
The thing that it's not special. No, no. They, when they sell two hundred thousand of these, they aren't specialty vehicles. No. And I think what bothers, especially Gabe and I, a lot is that it feels like GM phoned it in on this one. You they know, did. Yeah. You know, you have the Dodge Durango, which isn't quite as big, but drives way better. You have the Expedition, which is an independent rear suspension. There are so many other ways they could have gone. And if the car was priced like the pickup truck, like forty-three thousand dollars instead of sixty and seventy thousand dollars, you know, there is a different context there. But yeah. You expect now a that lot in that price range. You, yeah. you expect a lot, and it just doesn't feel like they delivered. It's not that we hate Chevy. It's not that we hate no. full-size no, SUVs. No, no. It's just that we think this could have been done better. It was I a fine vehicle this weekend, the Tahoe I took, and I got I, I had some averages of over, over 50 miles because I have a nice little last 50 miles uh, mm -hmm. indicator for fuel economy. Have, you know, 22, 24 miles per gallon, but that's cruising, cruise control, right lane, carrying my 30 pound daughter in the back, one bag, like, you know, I'm not hauling people and hauling a lot of stuff and I'm not really flying. Uh, it, it drove fine, but it didn't have any kind of elegance or refinement like the GL, for example. And that's, you know. that's what you expect for that kind yeah. of money. Yeah. So that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Talking Cars. As always, we thank you for listening and watching. We'll see you next time.